everyone. Oh, we're almost live. Um, it's currently a live stream, but for those of you joining, let us know what your favorite art form in the chat is. And if you're watching on YouTube, let us know what your favorite art form in the YouTube chat is. All right. Hey. So be officially live. So hand it over to Felix. Thank you, Grace. Hey, Suresh. Hey, Malaya. I see all of you in the chat. Awesome. Oh, there's a lot of people. Cool. So today, um, you know, we, we, we invited three very special guests um, from around the world. So mainly in the US and India. And, um, you know, quite frankly, today's session is one of those things where I personally look forward to because if you have been following me on uh, Twitter over the last few months, in fact, I have, I have always been, you know, uh, following all the uh, cryptos and NFT stuff, um, you know, and obviously being really hyped up about it on Twitter. And, you know, I've, uh, very, I've always been very bullish about technology and uh, where NFTs can, can bring us in the future. But of course, I'm not the expert yet. I'm here to learn um, from these three amazing experts. Uh, with that said, I will kick off with an, a quick introduction um, of uh, these three amazing human beings. And I will hand the stage over to them uh, for a quick uh, presentation workshop um, before we go into moderating um, this session. My name is Felix. I am currently based in Singapore. I'm one of the co-founders at ADP List. And with me today, I have um, Grace, who will be helping me to moderate. Grace, do you want to share a few words? Yeah, for sure. Do you want me to introduce us anybody right now? Or did you want to introduce yeah, us? Yeah, go for it. Event? Yes. Yeah, go for go. sure. So welcome, everyone. Um, I'm Grace. I'm the founder of Design Buddies. Um, by, by night and by day, I'm a product designer at Electronic Arts. And really briefly, I'll go over this really quick um, about Design Buddies. But... I randomly created Design Buddies in April of 2020, and it kind of exploded to 27,000 members. So we are the largest design community in the world. And I really just founded it on a goal to connect and support designers as a wholesome place where we all can chill and support each other. So we have a lot of mentorship, events, club, portfolio reviews, and more. I'll drop some links, but you can also join us on our website over here too. We're mainly on Discord, but we're also on all the social media platforms. And we host a lot of events like this one with like very exciting hot topics like NFTs right now with a lot of industry panels and industry leaders. And just so for, for some house rules, uh, events are recorded by attending you grant consent. If you would not like to be recorded, we are live streaming on YouTube so y'all can see that as well. Feel free to get, engage via chat. If something um, any of our speakers say resonate with all of y'all, feel free to comment um, in the chat as well, um, connect with each other. And later I'll be sharing a networking sheet. Please keep all promotional links in the sheet. Um, and you can also connect with each other on LinkedIn um, and send each other personalized invites saying y'all met from this event. And then we also have Q&A towards the end. Um, in order for us to collect, making sure we don't miss all the questions, I'll be sharing a slider link where y'all can upvote, um, most of your questions and between our post presentation and Q&A, we'll be taking a group selfie. Um, there's some Design Buddies Zoom backgrounds you can get, but definitely share your takeaways on social media, tag Design Buddies, tag ADP list. We'll be resharing all of it, especially on Instagram stories. Connect with each other. Um, feel free to hop into Discord and just have fun, be respectful. Um, and as also, this is also a partner event with ADP List. And if you want your own Design Buddies badge on your ADP List profile, this is how you can do it. Um, the code is here. I'll be dropping it in the chat as well. So you can just like copy pasta in there, but feel free to screenshot this for the instructions. Um, and with that, I'll hand it back over to Felix. Awesome. Thank you so much, Grace. That was a very comprehensive uh, you know, uh, description. So yeah, um, I thank all of you for attending today's session, um, 162 of you, and it's really definitely a lot of, you know, amazing folks coming from around the world. So if you are in the chat, and if you, obviously if you can, um, try to type in from where you're at, let's, let's comment, uh, uh, you know, like where you're from, what do you do? Um, would love to kind of see some diversity in the chat before we get started. Okay. Awesome. With that said, I will be introducing the three amazing speakers. Um, they are Melvin. Melvin is currently based in the US. Um, he is one of the co-founders and also a designer and artist at NFT um, Malayani, and as well as um, Ananta, who is also his co-founder as well at NFT Malayani, who is also a designer and artist. So if you guys happen to see their artwork around, please support them. And obviously, they look really, really good. And finally, we have Adip here, who is uh, the blockchain advisor of the startup that Melvin and Ananta has founded. Um, and, you know, um, you know, if anyone here don't know about blockchain, obviously, Adib is the best person to answer your question today. 
Um, in fact, blockchain has been around here for a lot of years. You know, I first heard of it in 2016 and, you know, recently it's becoming a lot more normalized. But trust me, we are still very, very, very early. Very, very early. Imagine that like 99% of people probably still have not heard about blockchain or do not know about it yet. So um, the world is big, 7 billion people. So everyone in this room, you are considered very early in the game. With that said, um, you know, whatever that is said today is not a financial advice. I have to give that as a disclaimer. Um, because people might take it as financial advice. But, you know, uh, today is meant to be fun, informative, and for you to learn about NFT and maybe bust some myths along the way um, in today's session. So with that said, I'll pass my time to Melvin and gang, and uh, they will kickstart this today's talk with a amazing presentation workshop. Go for it, Melvin. Hello, everyone. Hi. Uh, I'm Melvin Thambi, co-founder of NFT Malayali. Uh, and there is Anandan, and he is also co-founder of NFT Malayali, and Adib is there for our tech guru. And um, regarding NFT Malayali, uh, it's like a global collective of all the designers and artists. Uh, Adib, can you uh, go to the second slide? Yeah, so uh, NFT Malayali is like a global collective of all the designers and artists who joined NFT. And uh, what we are doing is like, a, it's like a small community uh, of like seven members. And uh, what we do is like we onboard uh, all the people who wants to uh, explore the NFT space. So we make the technical stuff very easily and uh, we'll share the concerns about how to uh, uh, how to mint your work and how to promote your work and all those the hard hardship we will we try to explain through different events and doing artist spotlight uh, and every Saturday what we do is like we conduct artist spotlight where we bring uh, some successful NFT artists and they will share their experience and story and thereby it will motivate many designers to get into this space you know and we conduct many uh, events based on uh, different topics especially collectibles and uh, uh, nft basics and a lot of other things so that is what we are doing uh, it's like a non-profit organization right now like we are just supporting our uh, colleagues and uh, designers you know like and we make make it very easy for everyone to jump into this uh, uh hype that's what i would say like because everyone came to nft just hearing the news about people but that is just a start like but we are trying to uh, make everyone understand why it is important to be in this space at this moment if you are a designer or an artist so uh, let me introduce my other team like um, there is one person called boho he is uh, managing all the content and Salmonium, he is the clubhouse uh, moderator. And Albin is the Discord admin. And Faris, he is managing the Twitter space. And these are the three things like artist spotlight series that we do uh, regularly. And uh, there is one blog in nftmalayali.com where you can go and you can figure out all the terminologies, all the basic steps and everything associated with NFT. And you can follow NFT Malayali in our Medium page as well to see all the amazing artists. So I'm... Uh, giving this to um, Adip, let him talk more about what what is all about NFT. Hi Adip, you can continue. Uh, thanks, Melvin. Uh, so I am Adip. Uh, I'm a computer science engineer and currently in my finals of my master's degree. So I will try to explain what this NFT means, why it is valued so much, or some, like that. In in my perspective, I hope you can bear with me. As a technical person, I, I try to make it a, as simple as possible, the explanations. So I, I hope the slide is visible. Uh, you, you can go to the next slide. Yeah, yeah, I have given the command, but it's a little slow. So uh, anyway, well, NFT, is, uh, NFT is a digital asset uh, that, we, that we can create, sell, and buy from marketplaces which are hosted on blockchain platforms. So marketplaces are like the like Amazon or the Flipkart or the website like that, where we use to create this NFT. So when, we, when I say digital assets, uh, people overlook the fact that what it means to be an asset. So an asset is something that we can prove our ownership and we can transfer the ownership or whatever rights we intend to transfer. 
so this was not possible earlier like take example of uh, our real world assets like our vehicle our house or our buildings like that each of these things have a uh, uh, like a register ownership registration framework supported by regulated by a federal government and uh, supported by the constitution so in the outside world we have that system to prove ownership of our asset and transfer ownership of asset but when it comes to the digital internet era we still didn't had any system that we can use to uh, transfer these rights or ownership in a secure uh, trustless manner without depending on a big tech companies so that's what means that, uh, so that's where the blockchain was invented it was uh, a means to make transactions between people without depending on any uh, trusted without, without needing to trust anyone any companies or servers or banks or bank banks or pay, companies like paypal and anything so how, what is uh, then it my uh, point comes to what is blockchain so blockchain is actually an accounting ledger we, we all have our own personal finance right so we, we or even a company will, company will have their own finance and there will be an accountant who will manage the account book so this will have uh, all the transactions or all the spending or the all the incomes written in a book and they will produce a, a balance sheet at the end of the month to calculate the profit and loss of that company or the personal our personal finance whatever it is so uh, the, this this is the same blockchain is the same concept it is an accounting ledger but instead of one accountant managing this thing a lot of several people manage the same the same accountant accounting ledger is managed by different people that's why it's called decentralized many people participate in it and they maintain the security of that ledger so one single person cannot manipulate what's happen on the uh, blockchain network i think the slide still hasn't come yet right uh, i'm i'm sharing my screen right now are you able to see it can you stop sharing yeah yes we're able to see your screen right now yeah so we will tell that with an example uh, like so um, adip you can uh, talk from a user perspective like okay so now yeah. how to how to get into this uh, how to start making nfts we will start, get to the point so this is an example of a marketplace you can see in another profile or and below you can see another marketplace called open sea so there are a lot of there is a lot of strong competition going in the uh, area uh, several marketplaces are there so you can find your the place that that is suitable for you so each each has a different nature and different types of way dealing with how artwork is sold so depending on that you can choose one and uh, then uh, yeah can you go to the next slide okay so when you when you sign up to a website whether it's facebook or instagram you we used we usually have some uh, email id we enter it with the email address so they will ask before signing up we need to enter an email address so that is what our identity in this internet but in when in blockchain we have a different identity we call it wallet address it's different from email address we cannot uh, custom set it but wallet address are generated automatically is a little bit mathematical and it's based on cryptography so i won't go into that much but wallet is your identity on blockchain so when you create a wallet you will be given a wallet address and you can fill in just like a normal wallet you can and fill it with cryptocurrency or whatever tokens available on the blockchain in this wallet so uh, adip uh, one second um, so uh to make it simple like oh, um, for example uh, imagine like i'm an i'm a designer or a graphic designer or an artist like and i want to submit one of my work so what are the first step that i need to do so maybe you can start from there uh, then people yeah. might be able to understand easily you know like um uh, see yeah, for yeah. example uh, first, first step I is to have, yeah first i yeah. have like a, a, a painting or, a, or or an image or a video okay so i want to submit this in nft what is the first step that i need to do the first step is to create a wallet uh, okay uh, uh, so what is a wallet uh, so uh, <laughs> wallet is your account on the blockchain you like like you make an account on uh, gmail or an account in yahoo some like that we need an account on blockchain uh, yeah so uh, uh, in a visual perspective it's like a plugin in chrome right like Uh, yeah, so can you can you explain with some example uh, yeah uh, yeah so the, like metamask is the most popular application that we use as a wallet 
so after the, we can install it by, by going to the metamask.io the website i will type the link in the chat so when you go to that and you can download if you are using a windows device or a mobile device they have they have support in every kind of operating system so you install a wallet if it is in chrome they have an ex chrome extension so that's what most people use and i'll type the so, link in the yeah so i created an account in wallet right so uh, yeah. next what like uh, so for example uh, let, let's take one simple marketplace for now and there are a lot of marketplaces there are uh, different kind of wallets but we are just going with one example to make it easier for people yeah can, can you go to the next slide i think the steps are defined in the next slide yeah 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 so uh, cre after creating a wallet uh, you need to have something in it so we can't go into blockchain with empty hand we need some crypto because every transactions that happens has a fee normally so in order to pay that we need to have a crypto, some crypt balance in our wallet so we need to buy some cryptocurrency so when you want to buy some uh, so adib uh, uh, so adib uh, 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 so why should i buy a cryptocurrency before uh, submitting the work yeah so in, in box like i said blockchain is a accounting ledger we can make a lot of transactions in it so so creating an nft is actually a transaction or uh, selling an nft is another one so there are different kinds of transactions in it and every kind we have a transaction fee and that needs to be paid in a cryptocurrency that is native to that blockchain so if you are we in this case we are talking about one example ethereum ethereum is one blockchain example we can take here it's the most popular one to create and sell nfts and so we need to start by buying uh, ethereum cryptocurrency so uh, in order to buy that so we need to go to an uh, crypto exchange so when we go to when while we are traveling to convert our currency we use a exchange like that we have crypto exchanges where we can buy cryptocurrency using our normal uh, bank notes bank currencies so okay one second one one second adip so uh, in order to buy cryptocurrency for example what i used is called coin uh, coin Coinbase. So in that, I can uh, uh, put my dollars, and then I can convert that into Ethereum. So I'm just yeah. clarifying in between, okay? Just to make it easier. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Coinbase is one popular one. Then we have Binance from uh, China, and we have a lot of other. Depending on the country, they have compatible issues with the different countries have different exchanges. Yeah. So uh, find that and buy some cryptocurrency, and you transfer it to your wallet. So oh, have, one more one more thing, uh, Adib. Like, so uh, how much cryptocurrency I need to buy before uh, uh, for minting one work? Minting means like submitting work, right? So for submitting one uh, artwork, how much cryptocurrency I need? Oh, so it de it depends on the blockchain that we are using. So in the case of Ethereum, it's a little bit costly. So uh, there are websites that track what are the current prices that cost, how much to buy or how much to sell an NFT. So you can do, find those websites and I'll put some examples in the uh, chat. And uh, like normally right now it's around $100 or $200. Uh, maybe like within a week it changes. Like it's, it changes very, very much because the cryptocurrency market is a little volatile. Like not little, very volatile. So the prices change within weeks. So in the last week it was around $300 to $200 to create one. And this week, it, it yesterday it became $100. So I think you need to have at least $200 to start. And yeah, so uh, just to interrupt. Uh, so for example, uh, when I uh, listed my previous work, like last week, I have to spend like $600. But there was a time when I made my first work, it, was, it cost only like below $50. So that is the difference that we are talking about. Like in some cases, if the transaction, so why this change varies and what is this uh, uh, price called? Yeah. Can I add a point? Like uh, we yeah. are only talking about the Ethereum blockchain. Okay, so in Ethereum, the transaction fees is very high, so that's why the gas amount is like this two hundred dollar to six hundred dollar range. Like it totally varies. It's it completely changes. Sometimes it will be very less. Sometimes it might go very high. So yes. that is the case only in Ethereum blockchain. So there are some other blockchains as well, which is very cheap, but the uh, people in these blockchains will be uh, very less. Like. On Ethereum blockchain, a lot of collectors are there, a lot of transactions are happening, like a lot of activities are there on Ethereum blockchain. But when we compare that with uh, Binance or Tesos blockchain, the activities will be very less. So that the yes. gas fees is also very less. 
I just wanted to add that. Yeah. yeah. So what is this gas fees, Adip? Yeah, it's, it's the same as the transaction fee I mentioned earlier, but in Ethereum, they call it the gas fees. And it, it varies depending on, at various time, it, it will be different if, uh, if the network is, there is high, there is a high volume of transactions happening in the network, the uh, gas fee will be high also, depending on the co uh, transaction that we are making. Sometimes some transactions are a little costier, costlier than, uh, like if, you are, if I'm simply transacting some amount of Ethereum to one other person, it's a small transaction. But if I'm creating an NFT or uh, collaborating with another artist to split the contract, those kind of transactions are little complex and it, it costs more. So okay. depending on how complex the transaction is, uh, in the background, it uh, it will cost higher. Okay. And so coming back to the, again, like, so we uh, bought some uh, uh, cryptocurrency from some exchange like Coinbase. So for example, I put like $100 and I bought the cryptocurrency. Then I transfer that to the wallet. That is the MetaMask, the Chrome plugin, right? Then yeah. we cut, connect with our marketplace. Marketplace is yeah. foundation.app or OpenSea or something like that, right? Yeah, it's the, it's a place yeah. where we uh, interact with, create and sell NFTs, just like Amazon. Okay. But uh, but yeah. Uh, yeah, so when we go, we go to marketplace and connect our wallet. So that, that's how we start by creating a profile. So just like we kind of, uh, kind of interact with Insta, uh, sign up in Instagram using our email address, we can sign up to marketplace using our wallet. It's as simple as that. Then create your profile and start. You can start uh, uploading your artwork. So uh, there are two. There is two steps when it comes to creating an NFT. The first step is min, we call it minting. Uh, it actually means uploading your uh, video or image, whatever content it is. Uploading it and giving some description what it what it means or you, you, what it means to you or the story behind the artwork anything like that and the name of it that is what minting is and the second step is listing so listing uh, is so uh, so Adi one second so before going to listing uh, the first step is like uh, we submit our work to this website it's like same like how we submit some artwork in Behance or Dribble right like we will upload the image and we will put the title yeah. and description. And here there is one uh, difference. Like for example, if you put a title or a description and if you submit that artwork, then you can't change it, you can't edit it. So you should be very careful about putting the title description and uh, you should be very careful about the image or video uh, because many people make a lot of mistakes there. So <laughs> this is very crucial. Uh, Melvin, Melvin, uh, there are some people in the chat that says that they are pretty confused with the description because all of you are coming in with all the knowledge on the previous slide. So maybe, maybe uh, Adip, could you do me a favor? Go back to the previous slide. Let me just uh, summarize it in one or two sentences for everyone, and then we can come back here again. Uh, yeah. No, the, the setting up of wallet, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. awesome. Yeah, so everyone, um, I'm sure all of you have heard of Coinbase, Binance, and all those uh, sort of exchanges, right? So you can comment if you kind of like use one of those exchanges right now. Robinhood, Coinbase, Binance, uh, FTX, you know, pretty much like all the popular ones. And if you're in Southeast Asia, you probably heard of Gemini and stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. So basically, those are not wallets. Those are exchanges, all right? So those exchanges has their, have their own version of wallet. But those exchanges are where you buy your cryptocurrencies, where you buy your altcoins, where you buy your Ethereum, your Bitcoin, right? So with all those uh, cryptocurrencies that you buy, essentially, if you want to buy an NFT, that is if you want to buy an NFT, you have to transfer your whatever that you buy from Coinbase or Binance into your wallet. And your wallet is, you know, like it could be your MetaMask, which is one of the most popular one, right? right? And then if it goes to MetaMask, that's where you can have your wallet and then you can connect it to a marketplace and then that's where you can buy your NFT, right? So the marketplace is where you buy your NFT, but before you buy your NFT, you have to buy some cryptocurrencies from Coinbase, transfer to your wallet, and then so your, your wallet is getting top up and then your, your wallet will be able to buy some NFTs from the marketplace. So I hope that's very clear. To all of so you, I understand why people are confused with why the crypto exchange and the wallet, normal wallet. So exactly. there is a fundamental difference. It's called custodial and non-custodial wallets. Yeah. So you know, if you look into it, you can understand what's the difference between and why crypto exchanges are not the normal wallets you use. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much. And uh, thanks for that, Adi. Uh, let's let's move on to the next slide on the NFT. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah, those are the basic two steps. Yeah, you need to create your NFT that's called minting, and you you can set a reserve price or a minimum price that you need you require for that uh, work. 
and you basically listing is you are giving that nft to a marketplace selling please sell it for me that that's a step listing and uh, the if there is any other uh, steps uh, the, there will be additional co payments for so what whatever transactions we make it it all needs some payment with the cryptocurrency you need yeah, to so for example some... yeah so for example if you want to upload one work that is called minting for that some amount is needed then you have to put price for that uh, that artwork that is called listing for that also some amount is needed so once you put the uh, once you list the artwork then only it will show in the marketplace with the price yeah you continue again okay yeah the basic of it now can you go to next slide uh, yeah so now collectibles so collectible collections are similar to like albums we in an album we have a theme for an album or an name name and we upload so many photos into an album if, if you are creating an album in facebook it will have a theme like a landscape photography or a trip to tokyo or something like that so collectibles are similar to that in an nft space there, there will be a big theme and based on the theme lot of several nfts not one there will be a lot of editions of nfts in a one collectible so it is similar to the collectible cards we use like pokemon cards or nba cards in india we have cricket players cards like as a collectibles so similar to that and this has this actually it, uh, nft started as a collectible if you might you might have heard about crypto punks this is the first nft the, like it's they are the first people that recognize like we can use nft as a digital property rights for artworks they are the first ones who did it and that inspired uh, the others to create similar nfts based on artworks so that's how it all started and uh, yeah that's about crypto collectibles and uh, right, right now the collectibles are really trending like people are uh, getting into uh, twitter and discords are really crazy go, going crazy over new new collectible projects that are released every day so and these collectibles have like properties like trades or historical sequel like if you take crypto punks it is the first nft that was created so it has a trades like historical significance or rarity all these come because the we we acknowledge the tokens like nfts as a digital assets so when only when something becomes an asset we, we can call it we have we can call it that it has the properties like the rarities etc so that's why it's important and that's why uh, this co it costs very much i mean well the like like the our description on twitter like why nfts cost millions of dollars so it's because of that the nfts are the true digital assets that was not there before and yeah yeah so uh, maybe yeah. anandan uh, can you just explain it in simple language as well as a designer so basically collectibles are like we have traditional cards like physical uh, collectible cards right pokemon cards and nba cards etc right which we all collected in childhood like it's very similar with, with this is happening on the metaverse like everything is happening on the blockchain like that is the basic difference we are actually collecting something a project just like uh, what we, what i said pokemon card we are actually collecting a project from our artist and a whole team is there so they are actually providing good utility so let's say if i collect the the first image you see here is a oni force so that uh, that project was minted for around 0.07 eth which is around uh, roughly 200 dollar or something 250 dollar so that was the initial price of that collectible so everyone collected that and so to, to all the holders of that project they will be receiving lots of utilities like they can use it commercially for uh, because we have all the rights of that particular image there will be similar images like 10000 similar image will be there but for the uh, piece i own that is unique that will be having traits uh, which is very unique for that particular nft there will be a special token for that so we can use it for uh, like any purpose like i can even print it on a t-shirt or i can use it so uh, for holding that like the price will be uh, increasing uh, because of the demand so like even i bought it for 0.07 now the floor price is around 1.5 eth or something which is around 5000 dollars so that is the difference it's like collectibles are like trading uh, it's just like crypto trading uh, so you can buy it and flip it for a higher price and some people hold that uh, just to get all the utilities that is provided in the roadmap of that project is yeah. it clear uh, yeah 
yeah so uh, in one hour it's very difficult to discuss yeah. the, all, all <laughs> this uh, in depth thing but we will try our best to explain it as much as possible uh, so here what i really want to highlight is how designers and artists can uh, shine here like for example uh, so uh, there is two type of artwork like one is like one on one artwork where we will put uh, uh, the one edition uh, kind of work in foundation or open sea so if you are an illustrator or a, uh, a 3d person or right like or a graphic person you can create some artwork as a video or an image and put it in that space and you can list it for like one particular price and once you list that the bidding will start and it varies on different market places but people can look at your profile and if they find it very interesting collectors will collect your artwork and likewise instead of showing your work in behance or dribble you can show uh, you can use these foundation and open sea as like like your uh, online portfolio you know like uh, you can show the illustration and you can show the prices so that is the biggest <laughs> difference there so <clears throat> that is the opportunity for an artist and when it comes to collectible uh, this is kind of like a uh, product design you know like for example if you take oni force or dead color uh, or any other project it that uh, project requires a branding team that project requires a illustrator and that project uh, requires a product designer for uh, designing their website and all those stuff so designers have a lot of uh, opportunity there in collectible projects as well i just thought to highlight that yeah the i mean the uh, oh, next slide yeah, metamask like yeah this is the, for me this is the most interesting part of the nft yeah so metaverse is like a interactive virtual world where anyone can come and create their own versions and people can buy uh, lands on the metaverse in market from the market places and create whatever they seems possible in their own virtual lands like uh, one example here is a toy face cafe it was it, it's a uh, an artist his own uh, gallery uh, image gallery so he created it on uh, the metaverse called crypto voxels and he displayed his email the nfts that he created and he bought in that uh, we can visit navigate through the uh, this uh, uh, gallery and see his works and we can redirect it will read if you click on the images it will redirect to the marketplace that has listed the image so this is it, it also has a map you can go to other galleries and lot of things are other things are possible like we can create a virtual economy where a lot of things like uh, virtual uh, concerts or like gallery display so lot of other virtual economic activities are possible in metaverse and the concept of digital asset and nfts will help to empower it and make it more available to everyone instead of depending on any single uh, company or yeah, like that yeah that's metaverse you can awesome. yeah, yeah, yeah. i just want to add something here just to clarify on the metaverse so uh, i'm sure a lot of people have kind of like seen ready player one <laughs> obviously ready player one is like the the perfect world of metaverse but you know it's not something that is directly what we are going into right now um, but hopefully someday you know we can all meet in the metaverse instead of zoom but yeah oh, yeah yeah <laughs> carry on uh, can you go to the next slide uh, i think the next uh, yeah i think it's my part is over oh uh, you can talk about the security thing that is very important yeah. then we will talk so, about the branding and community yeah yeah like i i told earlier like there is a fundamental difference between normal wallets we create on blockchain and the account we use on internet like our email account or facebook account there is very different like the very big difference so here the difference mainly is that our password when you sign up to facebook we we'll type username and a password so this is actually stored in the facebook server or if you are using gmail our gmail email id our ip and pa password is stored on gmail server that's how they are recognize okay it's the correct user that is trying to sign in but here uh, the password actually is with us when you create the wallet it is created on your device it's not created anywhere else and it, the, it is not stored anywhere else so that's what i meant by custodial wallet the custody of our password or the secret is with within our device so when you create a wallet it's very important to create it in a safe environment and install the wallet that you trust from the uh, trustable website you should not there are a lot of fake websites going out there so uh, you shouldn't be fooled by uh, fooled by any like fake websites go to the right place download the right wallet in a right device uh, that you are not using it for any other 
the pirated softwares or etc so, so if the device is vulnerable to or infected by malware your yeah, like on the wallet will be compromised so once a wallet is compromised you cannot use it again so it's done we, you cannot type forward password or recover something like that so it's really important to keep keep secure of your device so this is one important part of your wallet when you create a wallet they will show you a recovery phrase the it's a set of 12 words english words taken from a set of dictionary itself simple words maybe you can remember it or you can write it down in a paper and the order is important and the spelling is also important you cannot make any mistake so why this secret recovery is actually this is the wallet uh, your actual wallet i mean in a mathematical sense actually this is your wallet it's not the application or it's not the uh, meta mask or anything actually your wallet is this 12 words so many people don't realize that but uh, since i studied cryptography i know this is actually this is converted into a mathematical form and produce your account address and your uh, single, uh, private key all these things are produced from this 12 set of words so you should not take screenshots to remember it or write it down in a digital form it's not preferred way try to memorize it or write it down in a paper and safely store it uh, yeah that's what the that, if you understand these basics actually you know you don't you don't have to install any antivirus or you don't have to worry about any other things yeah that this if, if you are covered in this fundamental security yeah that's about the security part i have to talk about if you have any doubt i will clear uh, depending on the questions you are asking yeah so uh, one thing that i want to say here is like uh, there is a lot of things happening in nft and so it's very important to connect with a community that is why we started this nft malayali community likewise there is a lot of nft communities there so if you belong to some community it might be easier for you to learn more and to understand what is going on what scams are going on so that is very important and uh, as adeep told whenever you create a wallet it requires like a seed phrase or something they change the name right now but it's like a 12 words that 12 words is the key so you need to be very careful about it if someone get that uh, uh, 12 words they can uh, uh, take the money from your wallet or from you, they can take the works from your wallet as well so th- this should be uh, taken care of very carefully okay and then we will talk more about branding here yeah, one second yeah so for some reason i am not able to uh, melvin so, can i add a point yeah like- all this technical stuff these are actually very easy you might feel little bit difficult when you hear all this in a 20 minute or 30 minute call so you just want to read the article i have shared a link uh, it's a medium article you can actually read that we have actually simplified every single step like uh, how to set up the wallet like what is minting what is listing which are the market places which are the best blockchain to uh, post your NF- make your nfts so everything is detailed in a very simple manner which is in on a, which i have added on the chat i will post it again so just go through that it's very easy and i will say this again like all these technical stuff these are the easiest things that you can do and selling an nft is the hardest part that melvin will uh, talk about in, in a minute yeah yeah i'm not able to share my screen but uh, that's okay uh, one second yeah so uh, basically uh, 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 i know this is very confusing for any artist or a designer who wants to explore nft but that's completely okay you, when you start doing it it's pretty easy like when you go to uh, any marketplace and if you try to create an account right that is pretty easy to create an account and you might stumble upon some questions for that you can join our discord channel and there are a lot of uh, artists there so we have already onboarded around uh, 600 plus uh, uh, artists into this nft space so uh, all those questions people might be able to help you so don't worry about it but the hardest thing is like how to sell your artwork uh, for that you really need to build your branding uh, in this virtual world that is very much important in order to build that brand you really need to showcase your uh, explore your skill in a better way so for example uh, if you want to uh, uh, so don't put any uh, so for example if you are an illustrator and if you want to sell your artwork in nft space put your best work which shows your identity that is very much in the, uh, needed because there's tons of artwork being submitted on all these platforms and <clears throat> your work needs to stand out from everyone right so you you should have that identity and most of the good collectors they invest on people more than on artwork 
so um, that is very much important that is the one thing that you really need to take care of okay so uh, you should show your skill like for example i am a 2d artist i do portrait drawings but if i try to put a 3d artwork in um, uh, marketplace it might not go very well because uh, it doesn't connect with my identity or my skill set so what i really need to put in uh, nft marketplace is the best that i can do based on my skill so i put portrait drawings there and uh, uh, till now i put like seven artworks and i was able to sell six artwork and everything is based on what i can do the best you know so uh, and then you can also talk about uh, uh, how to maintain the profile everywhere and all those stuff yeah so let me introduce myself i am ananda i am known as nadamel in uh, nft space and on social so i am 23 years old i work as a designer so i was not having a good art portfolio since i was more focused on design and what happened is when i joined the nft space like all these collectors do good research about Uh, I'm sorry, I got muted. Yeah, Melvin, you are also muted. Yeah, you are no, good. Go you are good to go. Continue. Yeah. So, like every good collector will do a good research about our background. So, if a person is investing X amount of money on you, like he should do, he will do definitely will do a good research about what I was doing for the past couple of years. Right. So, uh, I was not having a good uh, art portfolio. so what happened is like uh, initially when i minted a piece i need to build that trust that i will be here for a long run so i need to uh, continuously uh, improve my art quality so that collector need to feel that I, i have a good potential and i need to invest in that person so also one thing you need to remember is like uh, every collector is investing on an artist like seeing his potential like it's just like investing on a company like if that company grows uh, that will be very profitable right just like that every collector is investing that amount of money on an artist so if the artist grows in a very good way even though he's uh, very famous on the physical space I, i think that doesn't really matter like i started from just 25 followers on twitter on march and like it was just my friends from india there was no one else from the crypto space so everything i have right now built in this couple of months so you need to interact a lot with this uh, like the audience is completely different from your instagram so you need to uh, start everything from scratch you need to be very active in the socials like you need to uh, connect with your fellow artists you need to interact with collectors like what i'm saying is not to spam a collector even i did that so initially <laughs> when i started in march what there was no one to help okay now we are here to help you right to explain every single step so what happened when i started was there was no one to explain uh, every single process like how to upload a work or how to interact so initially our thought was like if i just mean something someone will be there to collect every single thing that is uploaded on foundation so that was not the case so you ne- i need to interact a lot i need to focus on the art quality i need to focus on a theme like i, I should build an identity for my work so let's yeah. say if i mint a 2d artwork Amanda, and then if i, I go to a 3d just to sorry i have to cut you there but i think we are we are running a little bit tight on time um so yeah, we have okay, to okay. Some- <laughs> questions uh from the crowd okay. there um but yeah. but but i think you know if you guys have any questions regarding the branding side of things feel free to just put inside slido uh grace will be sending that on the chat so um just we will do some upvotes from there just so that we can answer as many questions as we can from all of you because i know that this is a very heavy topic but before obviously we jump into the question i just want to say you know um earlier on the presentation and workshop why is it so important is because if you don't understand the technology behind it if you don't understand blockchain itself you don't understand the future of this technology it is very hard for you to buy buy any nfts right now or even cryptocurrencies because then you will just be speculating the market which is not recommended right to all of you here and it is very important to do your own due diligence to study what you are buying and in fact you know like what um ananta has mentioned regarding you know buying the nfts is like investing in company you you don't just invest in a company out of nowhere right uh, you have to study them right so so there is just a just just for all of you to heads up with that said uh, let's dive into the question so there are some amazing yeah, before questions before we before yeah. we dive into questions let's do a really quick group photo for like 30 seconds so um as you put in your questions feel free to drop your questions and upvote the most the one that you want to hear the most on slido so I'll give you a couple of minutes to or a couple of seconds to turn your camera if you wish as well so i have gallery view open so we're going to do a group photo in a way for our instagram story 
Um, and on Design Buddies Instagram, I've been sharing some of my takeaways um, and actionable tips as well. So you can also follow us there if you want to know. Um, meanwhile, feel free to also connect with our speakers. I dropped their links earlier in the chat. Connect with fellow buddies um, and amazing designers. I'll drop the link to the networking sheet as well. We can send each other a personalized invite um, and connect with each other on LinkedIn saying y'all met at this event. And if you resonated with something any of our speakers said, feel free to post it on social media, tag our speakers, tag Design Buddies, tag ABP List. And with that, we can do our photos. So I'll count down five seconds and we'll do a wave. Oh, I love, I love the dog. Um, Amber. All right, all right, five, four, three. We're gonna do a static one first, two, one. Feel free to grab any object you want as well. Um, all right, smile on um, multiple pages. I'm gonna do all the pages. All right, we can do a really quick wave and then we'll jump into Q&A. Definitely leave your Q&A on Slido and keep voting each other's questions. All right, ready, set, wave. Hello, buddies. We are at NFTs for designers and artists with ADP list. Thank you all so much for coming. Recording will be shortly available on YouTube. Okay, cool. We can do Q and A now. All right. Thank you so much, Grace. Okay, that that honestly felt like a like a super bold, you know, commercial out of nowhere. So <laughs> thank you all for, for for being a part of that photo. Okay. Um, now let, let, let's go to some question. I think there is a first question that is upvoted by four people, five right now, including myself, um, by this person called new but confused. So question is, as the NFT is pretty new, what things do we need to consider about copyright issues before we create NFT fan art, like, you know, Pikachu or Kirby or stuff like that? Do we actually need to consider copyright issues if we were to make like a pixelated version of Pikachu? Uh, see, uh, Adi will uh, talk more about the technical stuff, but uh, as far as I know, like we need to read all the copyright issues uh, issued by Marvel and all other major brands. And it's better not to put any brand logos or uh, the names or whatever, you know, like try to avoid it. That is what I would say, because this is like, if you do do it one time, you can't edit it or anything. You can only burn it, you know. So we should be very careful about all the copyright issues uh, issued by the branding brands. Uh, I, like to, I like to add an example to that. Like Deep, you might have heard, of the, heard about the artist named Deep. He's the one who sold the NFT for $69 million. So one of his NFT was uh, uh, Mickey Mouse. So Mickey Mouse is a Disney character. It's a cute character, but his work was, wasn't cute. It looked at different Mickey Mouse. So he used Mickey Mouse and there wasn't any issue. It sold for a good amount. So I think the artist need to make his own version of whatever thing he is creating. That's also important. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Basically, don't literally copy <laughs> as it is. You know, like you need to put your uh, art stuff there to make it yours. Sure. Yes. Yeah, sometimes okay. what happens is like collectors will feel a little bit skeptical. Like, should I collect this work? Like, uh, will there be any copyright issues in the future? So. It's better not to use these kind of things, right? Just for okay. the safer side. All right, let's let's move on to the next question by anonymous. So if okay, so there's there's a lot of people who care about the environment, obviously, but let's let's just answer the first question first. If we are just minting and selling individual art pieces without any membership perks or whatnot, you know. Um, so just to clarify this question as well. So all of you might be curious, like, okay, how how come there is suddenly like perks and membership, like how did that come into NFT, right? So the more popular NFT actually almost always comes with a utility, right? Uh, you cannot just be buying an art piece by itself because sometimes that art piece by itself, unless if that person painting it is like Elon Musk or, you know, something, someone really, really famous and you kind of admire that person and you buy that, you know, art is always a, a small a, a, a perception, right? But if the art pieces comes with a utility, like a perk, right? For example, if you buy... Uh, my, my NFT, right? And I said, okay, you will have all the access to all the paid conferences by ADP list. And that becomes a utility, right? So the uh, question here is obviously, uh, you know, if you're just minting and selling without any perks, why would someone buy my PNG file? 
Yeah, so for that, I have to tell one example. For uh, the when I come to this NFT space uh, on April, I think like I met a uh, artist like she is only like thirteen years old, and I bought her artwork for like point three nine ETH uh, because I felt like within uh, four months or five months, this girl is going to be the uh, biggest artist in NFT space. You know, so I bought it. And it was just a uh, video, you know, like it's a small video and I'm not getting any utility or anything uh, about it. And many friends asked me, like, why you bought a kid's artwork? But I told, like, I, I it might be very beneficial for me later, you know, and I listed for like one ETH. And you know what, like uh, uh, last month I was able to sell it for like two ETH. So the artwork that I bought for like 0.39 ETH, she, she is the featured artist in foundation right now. And she's selling her artwork for like 1.5 ETH right now. The floor price is 1.5 ETH. So I bought the artwork for like 0.39 ETH and I sell it for like 2 ETH in the secondary market. So there is a concept called secondary market, which we forgot to tell. Uh, but yeah, so uh, utilities uh, uh, is good if you're putting it as a collectible, but without any utility or without anything, people will buy on PNG and uh, it's based on the artist how much they grow gotcha the potential is bigger yeah thanks for that melvin now the next question which i think a lot of people as well it was raving in the chat is that i've heard nfts are bad for environment is this a valid claim why or why not so simply are nfts bad for environment yeah, uh, NFTs, uh, anything that uh, human beings make is bad for environment, right? So <laughs> likewise, NFTs are also having some uh, issues there. But when you think like, for example, if you want to do an artwork, uh, you have to buy a canvas. So in order to make a canvas, uh, a, a company or an industry, they have to, uh, they will have like a lot of raw ingredients needed and they will have some waste as well. So likewise in NFT also, uh, these things are there. Like whatever human makes, it's bad for uh, the environment, no doubt at all. But here, uh, uh, not just uh, about the environment that I'm concerned, but the main thing is like the more you put your work in NFT space, the exposure for an artist or a designer that is getting is huge. Like that is the only reason why we are here and we are talking to like 160 or 170 people. So that is the difference. Awesome. Thank you so much for that, Melvin. Uh, okay, so just to just to kind of like obviously talk a little bit about this environment thing because I I you know I I have a lot of friends who are sustainability enthusiasts just like all of you, and one of the things that I personally learned and I thought I should share with everyone here about the concept of sustainability um, is that you know if 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 anyone here has ever heard of this um, SDG goals set by the United Nations, right? Uh, the seventeen SDG goals um, by that that the UN said that we have to achieve by twenty thirty. Right. Uh, quite frankly, you know that it's 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 a little bit far fetched from from where we are at today. Um. So so one of the things that that I've learned is that you know rather than thinking to do less bad, try to do more good. In a way, rather than trying to save a piece of, I mean, I, I'm not saying that you shouldn't save a piece of paper. What I'm saying is that rather than trying to save a piece of paper, instead think about innovating how you can in fact make paper sustainable or rather make the thing sustainable because that is a long-term solution as compared to, you know, like just saving and saving, like, you know, that, that is just a short-term solution, right? So kind of like the perception of innovation uh, should be thought about regarding sustainability as well. So that's... Yeah, a, that's similar that's thing, a, yeah. similar yeah. to how we are using electric vehicles, like we didn't stop using the vehicle because it's produced. Exactly. Yeah. So, okay. So next question by Ashida. Is it difficult to get noticed on NFT platforms and get beat if no one, if one doesn't have a pre-exist thing online following for their art? Uh, I don't think so because when I joined the NFT space, I only had like 1,200 followers, you know, and there are artists who has like uh, 100 and 100 K followers or 200 K followers and they didn't sell any of their artwork. I sell like, I sold on uh, like uh, six artworks right now uh, around like 0 0.50 ETH above. So it doesn't matter with your followers or anything. I told you, right? Like I bought one artist artwork and she was just 13 years old old and she doesn't have a portfolio <laughs> nft is her first portfolio so it doesn't matter it's all about your work your dedication your commitment and how much you trust in this space and this is very new so anyone can join here and anyone can make a mark here it doesn't matter thank you so much for that melvin
Okay, now there's a couple of questions. I think a lot of them are repeating. You see the environment in, impact and whatnot. So, okay, outrageous. Okay, yeah. Sim similarly, I think a lot of questions regarding, you know, famous people and whatnot. Okay, so I think this, this question by Luz is quite interesting. Um, so three of you have been in the NFT space for quite a while. Um, are there any tips to kind of like hype up the entire community or the people around on the internet to, to buy your NFT as a new designer? Are there any like go-to strategies that you would recommend um, to build up that, that hype? Patience, that is the only strategy. And uh, commitment and dedica dedication to the work that you're doing. See, for example, that is what I used to tell to every designer or an artist, like you should have enough patience. It might not happen in a single day. Like the moment you submit your work, you might not get a bid, but you might, it might rest it rest there for like six months or four months. But if you continuously trust in this space and if you continuously connect with the community and if your work is good, definitely there will be a collector who is seeing your work. If you don't engage in this community, right, it's going to be very tough because there are tons and tons of works being minted and collectors needs to discover your work. The discover part is where you have to do the engagement. And that is where you need to connect with the community and talk about your work. You need to speak up for your work. The one thing that I need to clearly say here is like, there is no one to promote you. That is a benefit and that is a challenge as well because the artist uh, himself needs to be like an entrepreneur mindset who he, he needs to promote his uh, product that is his artwork and he needs to brand his artwork as well or his personal branding as well that only matters and yeah there is no strategy only patience and i thought you have anything to add on on that side uh, sorry sorry what are you yeah. asking felix no i'm yeah, saying that, that could... yeah yeah so like just like melvin said like I, I i didn't have any much followers right i just had 25 followers on twitter when i started and I didn't have an art portfolio, but I, I built everything like uh, con consistently. Like I was uh, making good artworks, like improving the quality, engaging a lot on Twitter spaces and clubhouse, interacting with a lot of collectors. And we built the community to help artists. And gradually we started getting a lot of attention from a lot of artists and other collectors started promoting us because once I saw the potential, like I started selling at 0.1 ETH, which is like three, less than $300. And now my floor price is at 1 ETH. So I've sold around 27 NFTs in uh, past four months. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> that is a lot. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, like, like it's, it's, a good it's, thing, right? Yeah, it's real, right? Like because Anandan started a community uh, with, with, within a WhatsApp group, and it's it was only having like very less number. And he added me as well. Then I told like we need to make it big, and we need to connect with a lot of people. We need to onboard many people, and then we started NFT Malayali. That is where this happened. And right. we, we trust in this space. That is the only thing that we are doing right now. All right. Awesome. Thank you both so much for that amazing answer. Now, we're down to the last final question. Uh, obviously, we will have one bonus question later, which is a very short but funny question. Um, but we have one last question. It is going to be a billion dollar question. As anyone wants to kind of like jump in on that, I'm going to give anyone like sort of like an opportunity to say, hey, I want to jump in. Otherwise, I'm just going to pick something from here. Okay, got it. All right, so the last question is this, right? Um, I think for a lot of designers who wants to actually go into NFT right now, who are actually still on the call after an hour, it means that you guys are really, really serious about this NFT thing, which obviously is great news. Um, now, you know, for the designers who are serious about minting their, their artwork, there's different forms of minting uh, from Ethereum to Solana, uh, recently, Solana is going to the moon, yeah. obviously. Um, yeah. So different forms of those currencies, mean things. So how would you determine what, which one to use and why? Currently, Ethereum is very expensive for, for, that, for that. So uh, any, any comments or uh, what would you recommend uh, to keep a lookout for? On yeah, see, for example, if you are very serious about this particular space, NFT, uh, first of all, I need to claim one thing. NFT is not for everyone. Even if, if you have skill, it doesn't matter, you know, uh, skill is secondary here uh, because it needs a lot of engagement and commitment and connections and uh, community building and all these stuff are needed and, and it takes a lot of time from your life. So you should be very uh, adamant about it, like whether you need to be in this space or not. That is the first thing. And the other thing is like before minting one artwork, you need to do thorough research on uh, NFT and cryptocurrency. You need to uh, research 
what kind of a marketplace will suit for you. For that, you need to connect with a community and you can ask multiple people and you can look for, for example, if you are a, if you are doing like an oil painting and you can look for uh, in foundation, how many oil painting artists are there, how many collectors are collecting this work, you know, and you can check in other marketplace. So likewise, the researching part is very crucial in this space. So before minting, do thorough research for like two weeks or three weeks and connect with a lot of Discord channel and ask multiple questions to people. Uh, don't uh, don't worry, like you can ask any blunt questions to any people because the more clarity you have, uh, it, it might work well in uh, NFT space. Otherwise, you will struggle. Hope I answered the question. Is it clear? Yeah, I hope hope it's clear to them. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Okay, so yeah, there are some people who actually suspect that this is a, a bubble of sorts. I mean, you know, in my in my in my personal opinion, I think, you know, um, at, at any point of time, you know, like just like when the internet first came out, there is there is always the hype, and there is obviously some bad apples in the market, and there will be some you know fraud going around. So you know, just make sure that you guys are safe and careful with this, which is today's about today's session as well. You know, as what. Adib has earlier mentioned the security is a very important part of the entire crypto space and the NFT space. Right. Uh, with that said, uh, down to the final fun question. How do we get invited to Foundation App? Is there any, um, any referral codes or invite codes that you guys, three of you might have? Yeah, <laughs> so one thing that I can say is like, uh, I have like one invite for Foundation. So you, uh, you, you, you can share your uh, uh, like uh, work in Twitter you know, and tag me there and uh, I, I will look into it and I will give you the uh, one invite to the best person. Like you can tag NFT Malayali, you can tag uh, Nadamel, Melvin and uh, Adib and we will be looking at your work and we are, uh, unfortunately, we yeah, only have, have one, one invite. I have one invite also. I have one invite. Awesome. So we so have, we two, have invites. two invites. <laughs> yeah. So very, oh, very, so very, very limited. Yeah. So there is a, there's a 2% chance that uh, two of you win it here. So, <laughs> If you want, yeah. you can tweet what you have learned today, tweet your artwork, tag uh, NFT Malayani and all of you know the speakers here. Yeah. Melvin and, ADP, and, yeah. ADP list and Decent Buddies, Felix, Grace, everyone. Thank like <laughs> and then there will be obviously there's a two percent chance. It's like a it's like a um what they call the the the, the gacha pawn, right? So so there is a two percent yeah. chance of getting it. So yeah, yeah just, so get, just want to add a point uh, that we missed, okay. So foundation is not the ultimate platform to mint your NFTs. Okay, right. yeah, you can use OpenSea, which is just like you just need to pay one time gas fee for OpenSea. You can mint as much NFTs as you want without any fee. So uh, you don't need to just focus on foundation. Like since we are on foundation, like we started with foundation, so we can't just exit it immediately because we have a huge followers on foundation, and a lot of people will get notified if we mint our work. So we are still sticking on with foundation and the UI and everything looks very clean. Yeah. So yeah. The, the, yeah. The, you know, and the, the, the main reason is like many are designers here yeah. and <laughs> we know like why we choose foundation. <laughs> so we have two invites. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. If you guys want to use a better, nicer, visually looking platform foundation is the way to go. But either ways, there are still different platforms out there. But if you really still want foundation, then you know what to do. There's a 2% chance. All right. With that said, I'm going to close up today's uh, chat uh, and I hope everyone has actually, you know, gained something out of today's session. Um, you know, it is a very technical session at the start, but obviously we hope to put things in a simple term for all of you. Uh, do follow NFT Malayani on Twitter, on Instagram, uh, Design Bodies and ADPs as well. Uh, any questions you can tweet us, you know, DM us. Uh, we'll be happy to help on that as well. Uh, with that said, I want to thank the three speakers, Melvin, Ananta, and Adip for being here as well and my partner in crime, Grace, for hosting this together. And if, to, to all of you, thank you all for attending today's session. And I will hope yeah. to see all of you at the next one. See ya. Yeah, thank you all so much for coming. As always, stay positive and test negative. I feel like joke is running a little old. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Grace. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I always say that after every Design Buddies event, just to stay positive and test negative. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah i mean all right, i'm gonna stop live streaming on youtube so bye youtube buddies bye bye <laughs>